Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV. It's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Gigon. Now the news in details. The BJP has won four states, including politically significant Uttar Pradesh, in the mega elections seen as a semi final before the 2024 national election. The Ahmadmi Party also hit gold in Punjab, giving the eight year old outfit its second state after Delhi. In Uttarakhand, the BJP has crossed the majority mark while it's ahead in 19 of 40 seats in Goa. With around 90 of the state's 117 seats, AAP is heading for a sweep in Punjab. The people of Punjab have done something spectacular. This has been a huge revolution. So many huge leaders have lost. Amarinder Singh has lost. Sukhbir Badal lost. Bargash Singh Badal lost. Charanjit Chani lost. Navjot Situ lost. Bigram Singh Majitya lost. This is nothing short of a massive, massive revolution, Arvind Ketruwal said. In Uttar Pradesh, the BJP has crossed the 270 mark in the latest trends. The party is firmly ahead of Samajwadi Party and Yogi Adiranath set for a second consecutive term as Chief Minister. The majority mark in the 403-member Legislative Assembly is 202. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday hailed the party Janda Party's victory in four states. Today is the day to celebrate the democracy of India. I thank all the voters who participated in the elections, he said during his speech at the BJP headquarters in New Delhi. BJP workers promised we will celebrate Holi earlier, early this year. I salute the hard work of our party workers and supporters, the Prime Minister said. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched an all-out attack on the opposition over Ukraine crisis, saying some parties tried to create insecurity among Indian students who were being evacuated from the war-hit country. The party, Janda Party, registered a phenomenal performance in four states of Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Goa and Manipur. The Saffron Party and its allies were leading on more than 270 seats in UB, retaining the state for the second time. और पूर्वोत्तर सीमा पर एक राज्य भाजपा को चारों दिशाओं से आशीर्वाद मिला है इन राज्यों की चुनौतियां भिन्न हैं सबकी विकास की यात्रा का मार्ग भिन्न है लेकिन सबको जो बात एक सूत्र में पिरो रही है वो है भाजपा पर विश्वास भाजपा की नीति भाजपा की नियत और भाजपा के निर्णयों पर अपार विश्वास Aam Atmi Party National Convener Arvind Ketrawal on March 10 congratulated Party Chief Minister candidate Pakwant Man as the party is heading towards a landslide victory in the Punjab Assembly elections. I'd like to congratulate my younger brother Pakwant Man for becoming Punjab Chief Minister. AAB has crossed over 90 seats. Results are still coming. We will have put a lot of faith in us. We won't break it. We will change this country's politics, said AAB Convener Arvind Ketrawal. भगवान सिंह मान जी को पंजाब का सीएम बनने के लिए बहुत-बहुत बधाई देना चाहता हूं और मैं पूरी उम्मीद करता हूं मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि जो उम्मीद 90 के पार सीट हो चुकी हैं अभी तक अभी नतीजे और आ रहे हैं इतना बड़ा बहुमत इतना बड़ा बहुमत ये डर भी लगता है लोगों ने बड़ी उम्मीदें जताई है लोगों ने बड़ा विश्वास किया है इस विश्वास को हमें टूटने नहीं देना सबको पूरा करना है तो एक तो ये कि हमारे जितने कार्यकर्ता हैं मैं बार-बार कहता हूं हमें घमंड नहीं करना हमें अहंकार नहीं करना हमें बदतमीजी नहीं करनी ये लोग हमें गालियां देंगे Principal Director of School Education, Shanavas C, today clarified on delay payment of salaries to the Hindi teachers. 
He said the department had received authentication on February 25 from the finance department and the state notification reached the directorate on February 26. On the pending salaries from November 2021 till February 2022, Shah Nawaz said that there are 53 drawing and dispersing officers, DDOs, out of which 20 DDO salaries has been released. He stated that the department had to take care of the increment and also the errors which happen for every employee. Shah Nawaz informed that, the, that while cross-checking border terms, out of the 53, 20 was found to be normal, while 33 had issues. So the thing is that uh, the teacher's salary is not a delay by the department as such and we are not purposefully keeping the salary and not paying the salary, nothing like that. So this was like some uh, mistakes, clerical mistakes done by the DDO level regarding increment and DA area which we sent for rectification which came back yesterday. So today we are starting the process and within next 2-3 days everyone is going to get the salary and we will try to clear from our level to, uh, today itself. So these are, these are like very small department clarifications which can be obtained if they come and approach us and ask us. So, uh, we would appreciate if the teachers, before going to the press, going for any press release, agitation and all, before that, if they can come and clarify from the department, if they are not satisfied still, then they can do whatever they want. But we would appreciate if they first come and clarify from the department. Uh, see, regarding this uh, Hindi teachers press release, we got the authentication from the finance department on 25th of February and we are received in our directorate by 26 or 27. So the salary is from November 20, uh, 2021 to February 2022. There are 53 DDOs and after, out of 53 DDOs already 20 DDOs have been released salary. So along with the salary we also have to take care of the increment in December which happens for every, every employee. Then there is a DA arrear also with effect from November. So why cross-checking all this increment and DA are here, out of 53, 20 was okay and 33 they had issues because if we don't cross-check properly and release the salary later the vigilance case and all these troubles will come up. So we send back to the DDO for the rectification and they have already rectified this 33 and they are sent back to the directorate yesterday night. So by tonight we will be releasing salary for the rest of 33 DDOs. So that is separate from my part. Signing of power purchase agreement for PPA 20 megawatt solar power plant at Ganesh Nagar in Timapur between Government of Nagaland and MS Hello Energy Private Limited was held today at Hotel Vivor in Kohima. Advisor to Power Dovihodo IME in his address called it as a historic day for the people of Nagaland. He said the solar power plant was proposed to be set up at Jalugi but later shifted to Ganesh Nagar. The advisor informed that the proposed solar plant at Ganesh Nagar will be taken up under independent power producer IIP mode by MS Hello en Energy Private Limited. He also said Department of Power has also given technical clearance for evacuation of the power at 66 kV from the plant to 66 volt Ganesh Nagar substation. He said that power energy and gas are very important elements for any state or nation and for the first time the solar energy is going to happen in Nagaland for the 20 megawatt capacity. He said that the power is improving and the distribution and transmission systems in the state had undergone drastic improvement as the Department of Power had also brought up power policy in 2018 and the generation sector is well covered. The power, energy, gas, these are very important uh a uh, very very important component all the elements for any state or for any nation Nagaland <coughs> we have a very few generating stations projects in Nagaland owned by the by the government and there are few owned by the private companies but for the first time in Nagaland, uh, the solar energy or solar generating uh, renewable uh, energy is happening for the first time in Nagaland. Program yet historic one. In fact, I have not uh, seen 
or I have not come across any of uh, PPA eh, earlier. But uh, this time I think uh, it's, it's, it's getting done in a very grand and in a very big way. <clears throat> so I'm happy to be a part of uh, this PPA signing uh, program. I've been, I'm meant to understand that the uh, Hello University Private Limited has <coughs> been proceeding to come up with the project, uh, of project, solar project capacity of uh, 20 megawatts. While briefing on the project, Hello Energy Private Limited Director Himandeep Nalavatla said that the project will also create local employment for both skilled and unskilled workers. He said that the Hello Energy Private Limited is an independent power producing company based out of Hyderabad and has signed a power purchase with government of Nagaland to set up the first greenfield solar power project in Nagaland. The execution of the project is scheduled to start in mid-2022 and will take close to eight month forked commission. The 20 megawatt power project will be spread across 120 acres inside the Kanishnagar industrial area in Timapur, which envisages to generate close to 28 million unit per year. I think this is a small step, but in the right direction, uh, where we think the uh, opportunities is humongous for the state and for a lot of developers like us. And uh, I hope we have a long-term association set up with the state and many more projects to come. Uh, and I think we will be more than uh, um, happy to uh, you know, take into a lot of direct and indirect employment that will be coming in the project. So as, uh, as stated by Sir, I think we will, our aim is to finish the project as quickly as possible. And uh, I, will all, I will see you all at the opening. Nagaland Mega Entertainment is presenting Nagaland Mr. and Miss Mega Model Hunt 2022. In this connection, open and final audition has been scheduled for March 18 at Hotel Jaffu Gohima from 9.30 a.m. onwards. This was announced by Nagaland Mega Entertainment President Samuel Eki Pom while addressing a press conference here at Hotel FIFA. Interested male and female having 5'7 above and 5'5 five five above respectively in the age between 17 to 28 can join this audition. Dress code for female is white shirt, white t-shirt, heels and jeans, and black t-shirt, jeans and boots for male. The grand finale of the Nagaland Mr. and Miss Mega Model Hunt 2022 will be held in June this year in Kohima. So this Nagaland Mega Entertainment, is a platform where we prioritize and promote the youths, the young youths, giving them platform, and then the winner of this contest gets a direct entry to Mister and Miss Norris, and then they are also promoted to given entry for Mister and Miss Nkiavla, where it is a golden opportunity for individual people who have the zeroness and criticism to get part of the fashion and modeling industry. So I think the Nagaland Mega Entertainment is one of the fastest entertainment that is competing with the rest of the entertainment. Because it is not a business the entertainment, but however, the entertainment itself render voluntary service and also sacrifice the work from their own pocket to uplift and promote the upcoming goods through giving them a platform. And this Nagaland Mega Entertainment is not only the entertainment that gives stage platform, but however, the winners of this contest gets collaborated with the designers and they are wearing the outfits of the designers and they do the photo shoots where they don't go for free photo shoots, however, they are paid. The Nagaland Mega Entertainment is a non profit and non governmental organization established in January 2019 with humble intention and a feeling towards which focuses on fashion, beauty pageantry and charitable works. The Nagaland Mega Entertainment also envisages addressing the widening disparity in the society brought about by social challenges such as unemployment, lack of capacity skill building programs and unequal distribution of economic resources that leads to unemployment, however with an aim in addressing their all-round well-being. 
The group provides a platform to the youth from Nagaland to compete amongst the best and talented from all districts to represent the state and beyond the national and international levels respectively. Its aim is to promote Naga traditions and cultural heritage with a modern touch and help the young generation to reach and achieve their goals. It also aims to lend a hand and support to impecunious Naga models in fashion, modeling pageantry and to use and promote modeling and fashion as a source of influence to younger generations and help divert them from drug addiction and alcoholism. The St. Edmund's Past People's Association is commemorating 50 glorious years of its existence. The alumni of St. Edmund's School Shillong are gearing up for a grand reunion to take place the next two days in Gohima. In connection to this, registration took place at the police complex in Chumukedima on Thursday. Every year, various locations are chosen for the celebrations while the Nagaland chapter is taking place this year. Approximately 150 people are scheduled to attend the Golden Jubilee. The strength of the Senate Mansa School alumni is estimated to be in thousands spread across various countries. We are here at the St. Edmunds Past People's Association's 50th year celebration and this is uh, the registration that will be happening for all the alumni that will be coming from all across the country. We have here Auchuba Younger who is the Vice President of SEPA. We are celebrating the 50th year of the formation of St. Edmunds Past People's Association which is uh, also known as SEPA, S-E-P-P-A. So we are all uh, members of S-E-P-P-A SEPA. And uh, we have we had Irmbak uh, three days of of celebrations because this is a special occasion. Mm -hmm. So the first leg we have just uh, come in from Difu area in uh, Siloni. We had we had a picnic because uh, because the Difu guys they are very few in numbers. So they wanted to they wanted to jam in with us. So their portion they have already done, which is uh, hosting a picnic in Siloni picnic spot. And I've just come in and this is one of the scarves which they have given us as a part of the gift pack. And now the rest are now following it. As you can see, there are a lot of vehicles coming in. So the second leg will consist of uh, tonight there will be nothing happening. Tomorrow we're going to take everyone on a, on a trip to Konuma and Zilake. Show them all the spots and the beauty spots. And in Zilake to, 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 to commemorate the 50th year we are going to plant 50 trees, okay. right? So since we, uh, planting 50 trees is going to take a long time, mm -hmm. we have just, uh, uh, you know, like earmark about 10 of us okay. who will be planting, mm -hmm. and the rest we are going to donate to the Zilagi Village Council who will plant the remaining 50. So we hope that whatever efforts and whatever plans that we have done, one fine day maybe it will it should bear fruits and we will be so, we would be ever so proud to see that you know so that's the end of uh, day the uh, yeah day two uh, no not exactly because after that we will be coming back mm -hmm. to kohima mm -hmm. and uh, in the evening we'll have a welcome dinner at rcmp in josama and over there we'll have a music uh, cultural show and from there we will adjourn to have uh, you know dinner and after that will be the end of day two Day three, we normally have uh, sports like the way we used to play it in school. Mm -hmm. So I, everything is recreated as per the school. We'll, we are having house vests. We'll be having a march pass. Mm -hmm. We'll be having a flag hoisting. Mm -hmm. 
there will be a speech by the oldest servant from the Nagaland chapter and he will he will deliver a speech then after that we'll have some kind of a sports mm -hmm. then we'll have the prize distribution then we have the lunch and then we all again disperse and after that in the evening we will all gather in Jaffa hotel where there'll be music and you know dance and that'll be the end of the grand celebrations okay. yeah okay. and so how many members are there in sepa and in nagaland well, how many well yeah, you see because our sepa organization is worldwide mm -hmm. In fact, we had to push this, we had to, uh, uh, what, uh, not postpone, yeah, we had to postpone it because of, of the COVID situation. We were supposed to have, have had it uh, last year because this association was formed in 1971. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, so we had to totally postpone the year, mm -hmm. nothing happened. And uh, we then we said, okay, now things are improving, mm -hmm. so we will have it in the month of February. But February also, the COVID, uh, the Omicron strain came in. So we had to again further postpone. Okay. And during that time, all our overseas uh, guests, they had to cancel out because of travel restrictions and so and so forth and etc. etc. So we can't exactly pinpoint the number of, uh, of members we have, but we have quite a lot. Because as you can see that uh, we, as we said it is worldwide, we've got, we've got members in the US, we have members in Canada, we have members in Europe, we have got members in Malaysia, in the Saudis and so on and so forth. And in India we've got every, a lot of members in almost all the cities. And of course obviously, Northeast we have the maximum numbers. So like uh, we have uh, a good presence in Guwahati, Shillong, uh, Dibrugar, Dibrugarh is mostly doctors, mm -hmm. the doctor city of the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And of course, in Nagaland, we have uh, our membership goes to about more than 100 and plus, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how it is. Yeah. How many expected today for today's registration? Yeah, today we have already done pre-registration. Pre we have already done over, uh, over 100. Mm -hmm. And the ones who have, you know, done it, uh, there are some who have done in Difu as well. Mm -hmm. And people who are uh, who have just driven in today, many of them they have come in from Shillong, coming have come in from Guwahati. We are expecting again quite a sizable number, and uh, we are we are still counting because uh, some of the guys they have uh, told us that they will be coming in to Kohima. So the guys will not be coming in here, but this thing tomorrow they will be coming up to Kohima, and then they will be registering. We have here Mridul Kakti who's come here all the way from Assam. And sir, would you like to tell us what are your expectations for this 50th year for SEPA? Oh, uh, great. Great. In fact, I was part of the founding uh, group mm -hmm. in 1970 of SEPA in Shillong. Mm -hmm. And we've completed 50 years. And uh, there's no parallel, there's no other uh, example that comes to mind of any school past pupils association or alumni body like this. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have uh, from 85, 86 year olds to 30 year olds participating. Okay. Yes. It's fantastic. And this is the second meet we are having in Kohima. Okay. And, uh, so SEPA has been there for 50 years. Have you seen, what are the changes you've seen since you were part of the founding members as well for SEPA? Is there, what are the challenges or what changes have you seen in the last 50 years? Changes are everywhere. You know, they say that when you come to an old place that you love, uh, you find that you yourself have changed more than the place. But in case of serpents, you know, the, the spirit, the sentiment, the emotions of serpents, they are all over the world. And we have chapters from Dhaka to Calcutta to Dibrugar, Mizoram, everywhere. You see, and it is the, 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 a common sense of love, affection, a bonding. A deep sense of friendship that was uh, inculcated in school based on a value system. Mm -hmm. You know, based on, uh, we were taught by the Irish brothers. Yes. That has endured. Okay, and today we will see this very spontaneous, mm -hmm. you know, um, camaraderie, fraternity. Very, and we are very proud to uh, be part of it and experience it. That's where people come from. They come from Rajasthan. They've come from far away. 
We have here Jaydeep Majumdar from Calcutta, who's come all the way from Calcutta for the 50th year celebration of SEPA, and uh, he's a writer from Kolkata. So, sir, uh, like I just asked your uh, friend and you know senior, senior, colleague, senior yeah. colleague that, what are your expectations for this chapter of the 50th year, and uh, what are you expecting? See, uh, we all passed out from the same school, and this is a, a once a year opportunity for all of us to, you know connect uh, with our roots like from where we've grown we all stay in different parts of the country and the world also and uh, once a year we get back and we, we we relive our childhood you know those precious and golden years that uh, and on top of that what is also important is uh, we we get to reinforce the values that we learned in school uh, you know in in sentiments uh, school shillong run by the irish brothers the values of charity of goodness and all so that that is very important it's a sort of a um, you know moral uh, as well as fr uh, friendship bonhomi as well as uh, um, uh, recharge our moral batteries if one can say like that you know so that is what we look forward to every year and of course lots of funs and games and everything but also that uh, you know reconnecting with the past that's all we have for now keep watching hornbill tv